Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be on the video of the Canucks making a slew of changes as they get rid of Travis Green and Jim Benning, the manager, on the same evening. As that seemed like the time was coming, obviously the most success for Green, just by pure on the ice success, was in the bubble when Thatcher Demko was a man on a mission and literally a guy that could not be stopped. And that's what fueled them to win that playoff series. Green overall is 133 and 147, um, where he has, and then OLs, he has 34 for 300 points in his career and a 478 points percentage. Obviously, again, just like Rick Taki, you kind of have to put things into perspective. Not the best run organization in Phoenix, uh, now obviously called the Arizona Coyotes, but in Arizona uh, for Rick Taki to have to manage there from the top down, where with the Canucks, it's really obviously not the best run by their general manager, as Jim Benning has put them into cap hell, and really a cap hell they're going to have to really kind of sputter out of that it's going to take a lot of time to get out of that and it's not going to be easy for whoever comes into that next role is now it seems like per reports I read earlier that the interim management will operate uh Ian McIntyre of Sportsnet tweeted this will operate collaboratively or co collaboratively excuse me with Chris Gear, Ryan Johnson, Henrik and Daniel Sundin and then Dan Smile, which is a pretty good group to have, where rumors have been, will Hendrick and Daniel be the next guys? And they're obviously going to be loved, uh, good guys to pick, loved by the fan base, great former players, fantastic um, all-time Canucks there as well. So they would be great to pick, but even them, they're not going to get out of this in the snap of a finger because Jim Benning puts you in cap hell, and it's going to take a bit to get out of that, where Travis Green um, really is one of those guys that he doesn't have the best points percentage, but probably will have very good success if he gets another opportunity somewhere else as a head coach, whether that's he gets an assistantship uh, position first and then moves up to head coach, or he gets a head coach spot somewhere else right away with one of the openings. Uh, who knows? But I think he will have success elsewhere because he's not going to have, he'll probably have a better GM to coach, not necessarily relationship, but just a better GM performing for him and not always making these trades that seem to put the team in cap hell and also not capitalizing in your drafts. Because if you look at the Canucks, they have a couple that you watch yeah, with average foot. I also cover the AHL for Flyers, Eddie Gray, so I pay attention to that, that are fun like B, B-plus level prospects that might make it to watch. But you, you don't have enough of the Pocosins of the world that are going to really potentially become in the next cream of the crop guys with your team at that full record there. So you haven't hit enough on picks. You're making bad trades. So Jim Benning, I think, really is the guy that it was to blame mostly for the Vancouver Canucks having failures of late. But obviously, the easiest chain to make also to bring in new voices and to bring in a new vibe is a coaching change. Travis Green was there for five years. It wasn't the most successful five years on paper, but looking at things on paper is not the only way to look at things, and it should not be the only way we look at things because it only shows you one side of the picture where then when you look at the other side of it, which is, well, what did the other guy that was above him do? He didn't put him in a good spot to succeed. He didn't fill the roster that well, and he didn't draft well to counterbalance not filling the roster that well. That if you don't fill your roster that well, but you draft well, that can kind of counterbalance you making crappy trades because somebody comes up, like, for example, the guy that just run the Rookie of the Month, Lucas Raymond, a guy like that comes up how he did in Detroit and lights it out, or Morris Sider comes up and lights it out. You have guys that have come up and lights and played lights out in Vancouver, but then you brought in different people and seemed to gel completely. You just brought in guys like OEL that really continued to put your team into cap hell. And it really just didn't make a hell of a lot of sense. Obviously, bringing in a guy like last season, uh, bringing in someone like Braden Holpe, that was a head scratcher when I would read on Canucks forums and all that with their minds. But I did read on Canucks forums that with Green, it's kind of the same sentiment I'm trying to echo in this video. A lot of them said it was time for him to go, it was time for a different voice, but loved and really appreciated who Travis Green was, where Jim Benning's a guy that if you look at it, that people are saying, oh, thank God, like and ripping into him and saying, thank God he's finally out of here because he's the guy that really led you into the hell you're in now. And then Travis Green kind of just paid the price for it since he is is the head coach. So I think Green will have great success somewhere else. Jim Benning will be the interesting side to see. 
Is he going to get a job soon somewhere else? And who will that be with? And who will, what type of ownership will it be with as well? Because I think Jim Benning at this point might be someone that has to wait a little bit. Because he really did not obviously have an end, a very good end whatsoever. It was a really bad failing end with the Vancouver Canucks. Putting them into cap hell, overreacting to a bubble series. And then just continuing to make moves for this team that put them into very bad cap restrictions. Where I was listening to a Twitter space the other day that had some Canucks fans in it that they were talking about the team. You you can't obviously just continue to put your team in the cap hell trying to compete, trying to compete when it looks like the obvious thing to do was continue to grab assets. Like, have a good, solid, competitive team that's fun to watch on the ice, obviously, but might not be the most in playoff race competitive at that juncture because you have to bring in more of the Bacolas in the world. You have to reestablish your system where you continue to trade picks and continue to trade guys from your system. And that's not going to work if you're not able to just completely hit it out of the park, which is tough to do for anybody on all of the moves you make at the big league level. And Jim Benning did not do that. So if I had to put the scapegoat, and not even the scapegoat, if I had to put the reason why the Canucks are where they're at, that would not really be Travis Green. That would be Travis Green to like the 15th to 20 percentile at most. And then the 80 to the 85 percentile would definitely be going to uh, Benning at that point. So I think Travis Green, in my personal opinion, that's just obviously, I don't have sources for this, but my own opinion just from how things have went, I feel like he'll get a job sooner. And then Jim Benning, if he does get a job again or wants a job again, will be more later. But this has been a video on the Canucks uh, firing their head coach, Travis Green, and also firing Jim Benning on the same evening. Good luck to Travis Green and Jim Benning in the next endeavors in their life, whatever they decide to do. This has been Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Burke. A special thanks to my subscribers this far. Please continue to subscribe down below on the easy to use sub button or up above on the easy to use Professor Joe Widget. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the season and Canucks land. I really hope this all goes great for you in the future because I really want to continue to see Elias Pettersson, continue to see Horvat, continue to see Hughes, continue to see my man Thatcher Demko and Net develop and have great success in Vancouver. And you're going to have to bring in the right names, the right faces, the right voices to do it. But hopefully you hit it out of the park and you continue to have success there in Vancouver and return success, obviously, at this point. So peace out, everybody. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day and enjoy the rest of the season.